I've been posting videos about strong men for over a month, and I felt a bit sorry for those who weren't interested. So I prepared this video. Please watch it with like relaxed feeling, thinking, oh, there is something like this too. But this content can also provide a new perspective for those with erectile dysfunction. So it would be nice if you could check this one too. It's about telomeres. Think of telomere as a cap that covers our DNA chromosome. Just like the caps that we use to protect our finger when sawing, telomeres protect our DNA chromosome. But why is this important? As we age, our cells continue to divide, you know, like a cell cycle. These telomeres get shorter. Researchers have shown that people who died in the hospital at the age of 70s or 80s had a shorter telomeres compared to those who lived to be 80s, 90s, or even 100 years old. So you can understand that people with longer telomeres tend to live longer. That leads us to the question of how can we lengthen our telomeres. There are certainly genetic factors, but there are also environmental factors. So depending on how you take care of your body, your telomere can lengthen or shorten. Then we start to wonder how we can maintain long telomeres. In simple terms, all the videos that I've posted so far, the answer. But since it could be too much to watch them all, I will explain uh, briefly. The first is a life cycle. For example, overeating can shorten telomere, while eating less amount can lengthen them. Have you heard of Japanese cultural practice, harahachibu, which means you stop eating when 80% full? Anyway, this has been shown through animal research. So we can assume that this practice, the eating small portion, could affect human bodies. Because unlike in the past, nowadays, we have many disease caused by overeating. Also, eating processed meat needs high in omega-6 fatty acid and trans fat can shorten telomeres. On the other hand, eating natural raw food can lengthen telomere. This includes unprocessed meat, beans, vegetable, and fruits. The next one is a sugar. Of course, we need to be cautious with sugar as well. Most foods naturally contain some amount of sugar, and this is not a problem but we need to be careful with the processed sugar that we see at the market. Since sugar is expensive, artificial sweetener like aspartame were created, and these products can shorten telomeres. The third is exercise. While exercise seems entirely beneficial, too much can cause oxidative stress. Regular moderate exercise can help um, with the lengthen the telomeres. But determining the right amount is very difficult because it varies from person to person. Based on various studies that I researched for this video, it seems like a fast walking about 8,000 steps is a reasonable amount. But heart rate is more important than the number of steps. Of course, alcohol and smoking have negative effect. But there's a slight exception. It's wine. There are claims that consuming wine in small portion can lengthen telomeres. The key benefit of wine are uh, phytochemicals and polyphenol. But too much of anything can be harmful, right? Even if it contains many good things, increasing alcohol consumption can have opposite effect. So you have to be cautious. The fourth is a supplement. The antioxidant supplement I have mentioned in my videos are all beneficial such as a vitamin A, C, E, phytochemicals, uh, respiratory, curcumin, alpha lipoic acid, and glutathione. These are all good supplements for telomere. And the most important thing is this one. It's meditation, not just a regular meditation. This is suggested by a functional medicine community I found while preparing this video. I agreed with many points and wanted to share with you. So what does the meditation have to do with telomeres? This is how I understand it. Nowadays, we live with a lot of stress and stimulation. People prefer watching summarized video over reading books. Unlike before smartphone, we are now exposed to the media 24 seven. 
we compare our lives to others through social media. This acts as a stressor and increases sympathetic nerve system activity. As a result, our body's physiology relies more on the sympathetic nerve system than the parasympathetic because we are constantly exposed to the stress. So we need to balance the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system, right? And the meditation is a key exercise for this. So through the meditation, balance the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system, which helps lengthen telomeres. So what kind of a meditation? I believe the best one, in my opinion, is autogenic uh, meditation. It was uh, devised by German psychiatrist, and you can easily do it at home alone. You can find many videos on YouTube, and I will leave a link to a good video in the description. Play some relaxing music and follow along. The key point is that the, even though we cannot consciously activate or train the autonomic nerve system, we can improve its function through this meditation method. We cannot control our heartbeat, right? But through this meditation, we can somewhat regulate this function. There are two main sensations we aim for here. One is the sensation of a warmth, and the other is the sensation of heaviness. You heard about the weighted blanket and their benefit, right? Anyway, when we lay down and imagine our hand is getting warm, it doesn't actually get warm. But if we repeatedly imagine it warming up, this imagination alone can trigger some response in our body. You know, I practice Eastern medicine in the US, right? In the US, most people are still skeptical about Eastern medicine, right? Despite that, some of my patients who come to my office still show a very skeptical attitude. Of course, when they see a positive result, they develop a strong faith in Eastern medicine. But even after I explain everything like how it works, how I would approach, there are quite a few who still hold negative views, which is totally understandable and more than fine. But then I say, you know, our mindset also plays a big role in our body. And I tell them that receiving treatment with a positive mindset, thinking, yes, this will definitely help me, is a different from receiving it with mindset of, uh, is it really working? Is it just placebo? That kind of mindset. That's why I believe this meditation method helps cultivate a positive mindset. And as we live, everyone faces uh, various stresses, right? Stress, they don't go away easily. Sometimes when I ask my patient, oh, so how are you doing? And they talk about stress they had like 10 years ago, right? So they said they had a hard time back then, but they're fine now. And, and yet I can see that the stress is still affecting them. Unconsciously, this stress is still holding on to them. So they need to eventually shake off this stress. But trying to simply forget it, it's, it doesn't work that way. If it's easy to forget, who would be stressed? In such case, I suggest confronting the stress instead. So we imagine it like imagine our hand is getting warm. So you imagine, put the stress in front of you and saying, you no longer affect me. Now I can overcome you. So I want you to leave like this. So you can say it out loud or in your head with your eyes closed. I promise you, there will be definitely be a change. And another way of using this more practical is for diet. Some people have such a strong craze for certain food they cannot just resist. Or sometimes when you own a diet, you get so hungry that you cannot help but look for food. I want to recommend this method to these people. Our body has the ability to produce sugar when it's needed. But because there is a time interval, we end up eating food because we couldn't wait. So close your eye and tell your stomach directly, you are not really hungry right now. You can wait and remind yourself firmly for one or two minutes. It doesn't take long. It's about repeatedly controlling our body with our mind. As these practices are repeated and managed, and as people's self-love increases, their ability to overcome stress also increases. There is a research showing that people who practice meditation regularly 
live longer and have longer telomeres. So it's not just about wanting to live a long life. It's about living healthily even as we age. Maybe because I spent a long time in hospitals when I was in school, I really don't like the smell that hospitals have. So even as I get older, I don't want to be hospitalized. And when I or my family gets sick, I want to be able to treat it without relying on medication, if possible. So I'm striving to build a healthy body. In Korea, when you test for telomeres, you get a report like this. Average length, patient's length, biological age, aging speed. I found that there are places in the US that test for telomeres, but they don't seem as common as in Korea. So if a lab or institute that does this test, watch this, please let me know. Just like this test result sheet, if a 42 years old uh, biological age come out as 36 and the telomere length is longer than average and the aging speed is slower, I think they can live a healthier life than others of the same age, right? So I made this video to encourage all of us to make this effort together. So if this video was helpful, please hit the like and subscribe. And remember, health is wealth, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean, making health easy for you. See you next week.